hey guys what's up so this is an amazing video it will be on ancient history one oh one that is part one kasa part one brought to you by an academy un academy presented by dr roman sani double d doubt demolisher we will see how is it so so we will be talking about sources of indian history in this particular lecture what are the various sources how do we come to know ki aisa hi hota tha aur waisa nahi hota tha only that happened or not this so sources are extremely important there are first of all there are literary sources which are divided into religious and non religious so we will be dealing with religious a lot in detail vedic buddhism jainism and sangam similarly non religious one are social political and economical innumerable books are written in innumerable so we will be dealing with some of them then archaeological evidence is also important inscription study of inscription is called epigraphy and numismatics is coins and there are monuments also and there are foreigner details as well like greek have traveled chinese have traveled arab have traveled and so forth and so forth so we start with literature so in literature this is the these are the things that are important first of all is vedas so vedas literally means from vidhi that is to know that is knowledge or shruti shruti means to hear that is verbal transmission from one generation to another then rig vedas were written around 1500 to 1000 bc first eight mandals were written in this period of rig vedas first eight mandals it is dealing with prayers its upaved that is sub ved is ayurveda deals with medicine and there are 10 mandals out of which eight are written here mandals meaning chapter and sections then we have something called as later vedic age from 1000 to 600 bc and there are three vedas which are written the last two mandals plus samved that is saman means melody this collection of melodies and tunes if you remember this musda saga so it means music dance and saga meaning samved and ga is the upaved that is gandharva ved so if you remember musda saga your problems will be solved so upaved is gandharva ved and it is related to music and dance hymns are dedicated to som indra and agni sia so these are the three gods to which hymns are dedicated then we have yajurved if you just remember rivas or riyas so you'll remember rituals are with yajurved they are rituals for performing sacrifice and upaved is dhanurved that is archery then we have atharvaved it is related just remember math that is magical charms are related to atharvaved and spells to ward of evil upaved is shilpaved shilpaved in hindi it means architecture then we have vedangas they are nothing but parts of vedas sub parts or parts there are six vedangas shiksha meaning phonetics that is vocals kalp meaning rituals vyakaran is grammar jyotish is astrology nirukta is etymology that is origin of words and then we have something called as chand chand means prosody so they are various illusion writing poems and all then we have something called as aranakya aranakya means forest books it is written by and for hermits and for students who are spending time in isolation example in jungle and all they opposed sacrifice and rituals and they stress on moral virtues important aranakya then we have upanishad upanishad is the literal word which means to sit down near guru selected students they are allowed to learn and sit near upanishadas all the six philosophies are talked about more or less they are originated from upanishadas all the hindu philosophy then there are 118 number satyamev jayate is a word which is taken from mundko upanishad and similarly dialogue between yam and nachiketa what is life what is meaning of life what is death and all so they are taken from kado upanishad so these are the two important then there are chand yogya upanishad something like that there are lots of upanishad 118 number if you can remember these three names it will be more than enough then we have puranas literally meaning ancient explanations they were written during gupta period and they are systematic record of indian historical traditions there are 18 purans oldest is matsya puran and it was written during satvahan period they were andhra kings and gautami putra satkarni was the most famous king of satvahan period we will be dealing in details later on then we have something called as buddhist literature the jatakas that is the story of previous birth and rebirth 
of Gautam Buddha. Then we have Pitakas. Pitakas. Pitak means Pali. It is a Pali term. Buddhist is written in Pali entirely. Pitakas literally means basket. So they are basket of wisdom. Something called a Vinay Pitak, Sutta Pitak, Abhidham Pitak. Vinay Pitak was code of conduct followed by Buddhist monks. Sutta Pitak is religious ideas of Gautam Buddha. Anand was a disciple. He compiled it. And then is Abhidham Pitak. That is philosophical ideas of Gautam Buddha and Ashok the Great made important contribution to Abhidham Pitak. Then we have Miland Panho. Minander was an Indo-Greek ruler. He was conversing with and questioning Nagasen who is a Buddhist monk and finally he got converted to Buddhism. So it is the Miland Panho. Then we have Angutar Nikai. That is contain information on 16 Mahajanpadas. You don't need to remember their names but just remember the name of books not Mahajanpadas. Then we have Jaina literature or Jain literature, whatever you call it. The language is Prakrit. For Buddhist, it is Pali. For Jain, it is Prakrit. Then Kalp Sutra is the first book. It, it, is, it deals with the initial history of Jains. Like there are 24 Tirthankars. Tirthankar literally means pathfinders. So I'll be dealing with Jainism and Buddhism in detail. If you want me to, do let me know on Facebook page. Within 24 hours, I will demolish your doubts. Then Rishabdev was the first Tirthankar and 24th Tirthankar was Mahavir. Then we have something called as Naya Dhamma Kaha. Naya Dhamma Kaha. They include doctrines of Mahavir and we have something called Acharang Sutra, Code of Conduct followed by Jains. Earlier it was Vinapitak for Buddhist and here it is Acharang Sutra. Then we have something called as Sangam Literature. 2013 means there was a question from Sangam Literature. Please make sure you pay attention. Language is obviously Tamil. It is from 300 to 300. That is BC to AD. First book is Salappa the Gram. The, it is also called as Jeweled Anklet. It was written by Elango Vedigal and the main hero is Kovlan whose wife is Kannagi and who was who fell in love with Madhavi who, who she was a court dancer. So Kannagi she took revenge for killing of Kovlan and that is why Patni Puja that is worshipping of wife is still prevalent and Kannagi is worshipped. So there was a daughter of Kovalan with Madhvi and her name was Mani Meghalai. It was written by Satanar, uh, daughter of Madhvi and Kovalan. Uh, Mani Meghalai I am talking about. And after Kovalan's death, Madhvi converted to Buddhism. And it is one of the most balanced book of music, poetry and drama. And it includes a religious theme. Please make sure you remember these names. Silappa Digram, Mani Meghalai. And finally we have Tolka Piyam. It is written by Tolka Pier. It is including social and religious conditions and it is the best book on Tamil grammar ever written. So this was Sangam literature. Then we have something called as epigraphy. So epigraphy is a study of inscriptions. Oldest inscription which are found are in Harappa. They are not yet deciphered. That is we do not know what they mean. We do not know the meaning. Then the oldest deciphered one are Ashokan inscriptions. And it was deciphered in 1837 by James Princep. He is a civil servant in East India Company. Then what these inscriptions tell you about? They tell you about the territorial extent of the kingdom. Then various developments that took place in the kingdom. And various achievements of the ruler. Then we have something called as Meharoli Pillar. It is an example of an inscription. So it was uh, made by Chandragupta II. And it is present in Kutub complex. This Kutub complex has... Kovat ul Islam Mosque, then it has Kutub Minar and it also has various things but importantly is Alai Darwaza. So remember these four things about Kutub Complex, it is in Delhi, it has Meharoli Pillar, it has Kutub Minar, it has Kovat ul Islam Mosque and it has Alai Darwaza. So it is, what is important about this is it is rust free till date, that is the most important part about this Meharoli Pillar. Then we have something called as numismatics. Numismatics is a study of coins and it depicts what usually depicts rulers on coins I am talking about. Ruler ka photo hota hai, trees, gods, animals and socio-economic importance are depicted on these coins. So it started from Harappa and Rigvedic age. There was no currency. It was developed on barter system. You might be knowing barter. Let's say if you have wheat and you want rice, so you will exchange them. No currency required. So exchange of goods on barter system, double coincidence of wants. Then we have something called as later Vedic age from 1000 to 600 BC. And they are related with something called as Nishka, extremely important term. Nishka, please make sure you know this. Nishka term, it is a gold coin. It started in later Vedic age. Then in modern empire, we have 
पंच मार्क्ड कॉइंस दे वर पंच्ड दे वर पंच्ड एंड दे वर कॉल्ड एस पना और कर्श पना दे आर मिक्स ऑफ 95% सिल्वर एंड 5% कॉपर इज दैट अंडरस्टूड सो दीस आर द मिक्सचर 95% सिल्वर 5% कॉपर देन फाइनली आर टुडेस मॉडर्न करेंसी दैट इज रुपया इट वाज स्टार्टेड बाय शेर शाह सूरी इन 1540s देन वी हैव समथिंग कॉल्ड एज मॉन्यूमेंट्स दे डील विद सोशल एंड रिलीजियस लाइफ and also deal with the stage of development in field of architecture so these are the things which are shown in monuments then they are innumerable so will require a separate video lesson on it uh, the two important monuments outside india are first is angkor wat temple it is in cambodia and it was earlier hindu temple then subsequently converted to buddhist temple it is the single largest religious monument in the world expanding huge areas then it was made by khmer king suryavarnam 2 in the early 12th century and it is dedicated to vishnu and not shiva uh, then we have something called as borobudur stoop of java and it is dedicated to mahayan buddhism so these are the two important which are outside india then we have something called as foreigners accounts so first is greek it was before 326 bc because what happened in 326 bc alexander the great came to india then herodotus he is the father of history wrote historica something about india then we have aristobulus and one sicritus they are generals of alexander the great and they also wrote something about india then the most important book is indica he lived written by megasthenes he lived in chandragupta maurya's time he spent 14 years in india then we have dimachus he is a syrian he came in bindusar court bindusar is son of chandragupta maurya and dionysus came in uh, so it goes like this c then b then a so this is mauryan empire chandragupta maurya bindusar and ashoka the great not alexander the great so then we have pliny pliny wrote naturalis historica it talked about trade relationship between roman empire with india it was written somewhere around 1st century ad then we have ptolemy he wrote the book geography it talks about indian soils birds territories etc then the single most important book is peri plus of the eridrian sea eridrian means literally red and it was written somewhere around 1st century to 2nd century ad and it is written by an anonymous author it is the best book to explain most of the trade relations between india and other countries especially rome then we have something called as chinese travelers the two famous are faiyan he wrote a book called fo qo qi just remember this name records of buddhist kingdom and he came in the time period of chandragupta too he talks about social life of gupta period similarly we have hyun sang or zuan sang whatever you want to call it he wrote c u k he is also called as prince of pilgrims he stayed 16 years in india he came in the time of harshvardhan around 6th to 7th century ad and he stayed in nalanda university for 5 years that is why japanese government and chinese government they are funding for developing nalanda university then we have something called as arab travelers arab travelers include al biruni he was from khiva that is uzbekistan he wrote a book called kitabul hind or tahqiq e hind he came in 117 1017 that is at the turn of second millennia or 11th century along with mahmud of ghazni he is famous for robbing india 17 times he was a great interpreter i am talking about al biruni great interpreter and great scholar of indian science maths astronomy arabic sanskrit you tell it he knows it then he was influenced by bhagavad gita like most of us and his two three statements which are crucial for exam point of view please pay attention he told that indians are geniuses but arrogant because they do not share their knowledge and historians in india do not write in chronological order please make sure you remember these two words so guys if you like this video and if you want me to make more video do like share and subscribe this is our channel an academy mine and gorovs and if you have still any query you can ping me at my facebook page that is www.facebook.com/romansani.official you can also tweet to me at my twitter handle romansani thank you guys you guys are awesome thank you for watching it